Greetings and welcome to another episode of Caring for You with me, Dr. Terence Drew. As you know, we have started a new format and our first episode would have aired just recently where we looked at aspects of COVID. But today we want to look at the indirect repercussions of the COVID-19 virus. And those repercussions are the mental health, the financial difficulties, and other aspects that our population and other persons around the world are dealing with. And so one of the things I want to look at today is the mental health aspect. And my main source of reference would be the CDC uh, from the United States of America. And so what are we to look for when it comes to the mental health as COVID-19 continues to spread throughout the region, our country and the world? One, you should look and see if you have mood changes. Changes in mood, meaning you're feeling sad, you're feeling down, not having interest in things that you used to be interested in. For example, if you like sports and all of a sudden watching a good sports team play is not of interest to you. If you like, you know, conversing with your friends, playing dominoes, you know, just those little things that you enjoy that you are not enjoying anymore, that can be a signal that your mental health is being affected. How about if you're sleeping too much, you just find yourself oversleeping or to the contrary, that you're not sleeping enough, that can also be a signal that you're having mental health issues or you're having difficulty sleeping. That again can be one. I see patients all the time who during this COVID-19 have difficulty falling asleep and this is also a part of the mental health aspect. And if that becomes a serious problem, it is time for you to have a consultation or even conversation with your healthcare provider or even um, your doctor. What about even your bathroom habits that you notice that you're being com becoming constipated, having abdominal pain, diarrhea, something we call irritable bowel syndrome, that too can also be a manifestation that your mental health is being affected. Are you feeling more anxious? Anxiety can manifest itself in different ways. Your heart is beating fast, you are sweating more, you are worrying, worrying about your own health, your own situation, and worrying about the situation of your children, your neighbors, your country um, on a whole. These things can be manifestations of a deterioration in your mental health. But apart from these things, what can also happen? Can you imagine people staying in enclosed small spaces for two weeks? That can lead to increased domestic violence. And we have seen instances of this and this is not just unique to sink its and Nevis. Violence between partners, violence against children and minors, sexual violence and so forth. And so these are the repercussions and sometimes the unspoken repercussions of COVID-19, but they are devastating and have really affected our people in negative ways. And that is why I think that it should definitely be highlighted. But if you have all or many of these things, or just a few of these things, what can you do to really deal with them? And the measures can be simple. For example, there are persons who spend a whole day looking at the TV. They hear these, you know, thousands of people die here, thousands of people go on to the hospital, you know, people drop down. And so they're constantly being fed this negative um, information and so sometimes that overwhelming um, information can really have a devastating effect on the mental health. So it's important that you work on your mental health and one of the ways is to limit the amount of information that you expose yourself to. And how can you do that? Maybe you can choose one or two TV shows or news shows per day to keep informed but beyond that you really should turn off the TV, turn off the computer, turn off the phone that have this constant feed of information that can affect your mental health. So limit the amount of information that you allow. The other thing that you can make sure of is that you stay connected. The social distancing can be devastating because human beings are social beings and we are really engineered and designed to 
really communicate and have good interaction. But social distancing has interrupted um, what is considered to be norm, the norm for society and societal um, interaction. And so what I would recommend in that case is that we can find different ways to stay in touch. You can use your phone, have a video chat, have a phone call, regular phone calls with friends and families and, you know, your groups around who you normally would talk to. You can have video conferences, use Zoom so that you can not only hear voice but you can see faces. So that that interaction, even though you're not physically in touch, that can help to, you know, maintain your your mental health. So those two things I have spoken of. But what else can you do? What about exercise? We know that regular exercise has you know, tremendous benefits, not only physically, but also mentally. Because when you exercise, your brain reduces certain chemicals that help to maintain your health. And so we want to encourage you, know, encourage you to set up an exercise routine. It doesn't have to be the fancy thing that you go to a gym and all these you know, trainers. You don't need that. Just a 30-minute walk, three to five days a week, can get a lot can get a lot in in terms of your own mental health and mental stability. So regular exercise. What about making sure that you eat right? There are certain foods that we know that can deteriorate your mental health. A lot of alcohol can be a, can be a problem. Smoking excessively and smoking certain types of substances. Eating foods that are high in fat and high in sugar and lack nutritional value can also deal a blow to your mental health. And so I want to recommend a well-balanced meal with lots of fruits and vegetables and, you know, nuts and whole grain, water, um, can really help um, you to have a good mental health. So we see that even food can impact how you feel. And people know this. When you go and you have a meal full with fat, you get a, you know, good feeling after. Then afterwards, it's almost like a crash. But when you eat whole foods, you, you, see, you feel good. So food is excellent, having a good diet is excellent, staying in touch is excellent, watching how much information that you allow in is also um, important in maintaining your, your mental health. And for those who might have underlying health conditions, we are saying that it's very, very important that you manage these underlying conditions. You manage the chronic non-communicable diseases such as the diabetes, the hypertension and so forth because they are important in maintaining your health in general. But apart from that, one of the manifestations of problems with mental health is that these chronic, non-communicable diseases, they can become to some extent uncontrolled. Uh, for example, if your blood pressure had been in control and all of a sudden your blood pressure is spiking, your blood sugar was in control and all of a sudden your blood sugar is spiking. That can be a manifestation of mental health issues. But if you were to maintain them, we know that that in itself can have a positive impact on your mental health. And so we want to also stress the importance of sleep. Sleep is important. Nothing can substitute for a good night's rest. And so sleep should be prioritized. And you should practice what is called good sleep hygiene. What does that mean? Eliminate as much as possible anything that can be a stimulant from your sleeping environment, meaning phones, TVs, computers. Allow your bedroom or where you sleep to become sol solely for sleeping. And that in itself can help to promote sleep. Because when you have an environment that is dark and is limited in terms of stimulants, that promotes good sleep. And we know that good sleep helps to create good mood and therefore can help to promote good, good mental health. And so sleep is important to make sure that you maintain your mental health. Set a routine, follow a routine. Don't just live haphazardly, just go willy-dilly about your day. You set a routine and having that routine helps to keep you um, on target with what you want to do. And this can create good habits and help to maintain your mental health. So from the time you wake up, you know what you're doing from hour to hour. And that keeps you very disciplined and that keeps your mental health very stable or at least help to promote it. So that means you have control over what you do and what you will not do. And that in itself says a lot about 
your state of health. So I want to encourage all of us to think about the things that I just spoke about and to even read further into what I spoke about. The CDC.org is an excellent resource for mental health during COVID-19 or even our own Ministry of Health can be sought for information. So remember, you are not alone. Ask for help. Reach out for you are not alone and there are others there to help you. And in our next section, our segment, I will introduce the president of the CARE Foundation who would speak about how CARE as a foundation, along with other organizations and foundations, um, is working to really um, help to deal with the scourge of COVID-19. Hold on, stop. Think about the drink before you take a drop. Read up on the label on the back. They say it's ain't sugar, low and fat. Huh. But don't be fooled by that. Drink some water, share some love. Tell your body you're sweet Tell enough. Your body is sweet. Drink some water, share some love. Tell somebody you're sweet Tell enough. Drink some water, share some love. Tell your body you're sweet Tell enough. Sweet. Drink some water, share some love. Tell somebody, tell somebody. Hey. An open interactive event can be described as Tremendous, effective And power with any conference around the world From exhibitions to trade shows Corporate events to product launches From press events to political functions We are the secret sauce behind events that make you go Wow! We've staged multiple world-class events in the Caribbean and develop the skill to deliver quality in every detail, whether the event is live or fully virtual, or maybe even somewhere in between. At Open Interactive, we got your events covered. Get your free quotation today at www.madebyopen.com. The SKN Newsline website now offers you more news. Log on to www.sknnewsline.com for local, regional, and international news. You can also watch the latest newscast and keep abreast with news in sports. All from sknnewsline.com. That's www.sknnewsline.com. News at your fingertips. It's the new and improved SK Newsline Android mobile app. With the SK Newsline app, you can watch your news reports, the SK Newsline newscast, sports, special features, and so much more. You can also send us a WhatsApp or call us directly. Go in the Google Play Store, search SK Newsline, and download the app today. The SK Newsline mobile app. News on the go. Welcome back to this episode of Caring for You with me, Dr. Terence Drew. In this episode, we have been speaking about the indirect repercussions of COVID-19, more specifically, mental health. And also, we looked at, very shortly, financial difficulties and how that can contribute to mental health. Today, we have with us the president of the CARE Foundation, a number of foundations have been involved and organizations have been involved with COVID-19 to help in specific ways to deal with the repercussions, especially those financial issues, food with food access, you know, mental health issues and so forth. And so I want to ask you oh, about care and how care would have been um, a part of this effort to help the people here in St. Kitts and Nevis. So let me introduce her, um, Nevis um, Dockery who is the president of the Kia Foundation. So Neris, tell us about Kia and how has Kia been helping our people with respect to the repercussions of COVID-19? Yes, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity, Dr. Drew, for being here today. Uh, the Kia Foundation was established on February 22nd of 2021. Uh, as you are aware, um, you are the founder of the foundation. 
uh, the CARE Foundation was really created with the intent to assist people wherever we can. The last 10 years really have been very difficult for our people. We've had crisis after crisis, starting with the global economic crisis, and then we now have climate change as well as one of the major um, crises affecting our federation. And add to the mix now, coming in 2020, was the COVID-19 pandemic. And about a year or so ago, um, we recognized the trends whereby COVID-19 was creating widespread unemployment globally. Um, within nations, many people were thrown into extreme poverty. And by the end of 2020, millions were thrown into extreme poverty. And the same has occurred here in St. Kitts and Nevis. As a small island state, in fact, we have been feeling the disproportionate effects of those impacts on the economy as well as on our people. So there are many people who have been without work for quite some time, some for over one year. You have families who are where multiple adults in the home are unemployed. You have um, somewhat of a overwhelming of the, pub, the, the, the social services uh, that's offered. And this is the time for non-governmental organizations to really step in and to see where they can be of assistance. So the Care Foundation is here to let our people know that your community loves you, your, your community cares for you, and there are people who would be willing to come in and reach out. So we have been targeting families essentially who are unemployed or what we call asset limited income constrained employed. Those are families who might be in the PEP, the PEP program. Uh, there might be families who are making a, a, a minimum wage. So, so maybe, let me ask, mm -hmm. so the CARE Foundation mm -hmm. is not only limited to Sinkets, but also to Nevis. So it, it, it works across the, the, the Federation, correct? Yes, it's nationwide. Uh, we have operations both on Sinkets and Nevis. And the CARE Foundation also has a volunteer corps attached to it, a national volunteer corps, where we are recruiting citizens, really, to become involved and our recruits are both in Tinkets and Nevis. We are getting to where we're actually going to have chapters in every community. Uh, our zones are based on the constituency um, boundary system because that is what's used by most of the disaster agencies across Tinkets and Nevis and has been found to work um, from Nima to the Red Cross. So we're using those boundaries as well and we create, we've created zones around those constituencies. Before you continue, mm -hmm. you said that Kia was founded mm -hmm. in 2020. Yes. So you're saying that it is duly and properly founded in the law yes. and it is properly registered and accepted as a foundation, correct? Yes, it uh -huh. is. Okay. It was founded, it was established on February 22nd of 2021, actually, under the Foundations Act. Uh, we fall under the authority of the uh, Financial Services and Regulatory Commission. And uh, we are accountable to them in terms of um, the utilization of our funding and uh, the operations to ensure that everything is above board. And um, since we were established, we have been extremely um, affirmed by how the outpouring out there in terms of people willing to step forward, to step forward. Uh, the donor community um, within the, the, the country in terms of persons in the private sector as well as private individuals have stepped forward to um, offer significant sums to our operations and over the course of a very short period of time in less than within less than six months of us being in, in existence we've had multiple operations across both countries we had a major one both both islands I should say we had a major operation in August uh, where we were able to uh, impact between 150 to 200 families. So when you said mm -hmm. that these operations, what are these operations and, and, and mm -hmm. reaching out to families, what, are you be, what is being delivered to the families okay. and why is it necessary to help the families um, in this way? What are, your, what are your findings with respect to the needs mm -hmm. of, of the persons in our federation and what are you delivering? And how is that impacting the families, whether negatively, positively, and also, um, is this having some sort of you know, mitigation effect with respect to their mental health situation? 
Yes. Well, our food relief operations are attached to our priority number one project, which is the establishment of a national food bank. We want to create a situation where people can access food where there is a need. And out of this, we have had several operations knowing that there's an immediate demand. So as we build towards the creation of a national food bank with all of the, the bricks and mortar of actually having a warehouse and all those things, we are doing on demand as well as emergency responses as we see the needs arise. So we have many families. We have some families as large as nine people um, where there's no one employed in the home and so on. And so we would have had these operations. We have a food bank committee that we have set up, which is a standing committee of the Board of Counselors of the CARE Foundation. From those, we have many persons who have expertise in disaster management, um, in community outreach, and they have been responsible for managing our database in terms of doing the appropriate needs assessment, going into communities, seeing where there are needs, and uh, have getting referrals from key agencies including the Ministry of Social Development, including the Red Cross and others. And so far we have had tremendous success in terms of the reception that we've gotten. Uh, the demand is clear. The demand is clear because as much as we may have had several organizations offering some form of food relief, at the end of the day, given the magnitude of the need, it will never be enough. And so what we do will never be able to replace a job. And so this is going to be an ongoing demand and this is a daily need, need that people have to meet. So let and me ask, so yes. mm -hmm. when you go to a house and you knock on that door and you say to the persons, mm -hmm. we are here from the Care Foundation, mm -hmm. what is the reaction? The reaction is excellent. In fact, most of the, our beneficiaries know that we're coming in advance because these are people who we would have given a call and interviewed, assessed their needs and ranked. And so from a, a scale of 20, where it was the most extreme need, um, right down to a number one within our vulnerable population, these are persons who are, are either elderly, disabled, and so on. And they essentially are expecting us, but when they do receive the packages, we've had just an, employment, a, an outpouring of gratitude. We've had persons even become very emotional and you see the tears and the, the situation and, and conditions that we, we're seeing that some of our, our people are facing right now. It is truly, truly touching and we're just happy that we can be able to assist in this way. Right. So, um, we have people living mm -hmm. in conditions without it electricity we have we have we have some very severe situations that are, people are facing and, and we are very very happy to be able to help right so mm -hmm. based on what you're saying imagine you have a family difficulty mm -hmm. um, existing no jobs difficulty to to find food mm -hmm. and therefore when you deliver that food i can imagine that it's having a tremendous positive impact in terms of their mental health that they would have food for some time and that can help tremendously. Yes. So in that way, I would say even from a medical perspective that Kia Foundation and any other foundation, organization, social services, whoever, the church, um, the churches, whoever they might be, that they will be having a tremendous positive impact on people's mental health. Because when you show up with a need to satisfy a need, mm -hmm. that brings a great deal of relief and that in itself can help with their mental health. Thank you so much, Nerys, for yes. really helping us to understand the Care Foundation, what it has been doing, how it has been helping the people throughout St. Kitts and Nevis in bringing them emergency relief, um, food packages and so forth. And we want to encourage you and the organization to continue doing that because at the end of the day, this can also help the health of our people by making sure they have food to eat and to alleviate the mental stress of worrying about where the next meal would come from. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much for what you have do been doing. And we encourage you to continue. And we encourage persons to reach out to CARE who can give so that CARE can reach out to others. If that's a possibility, and those who need can also reach out to CARE so that a need can be satisfied. Thank you very much, Nerys, for the CARE Foundation. And thank you, Dr. Drew. And I just wanted to add to your point just quickly that also contributing to their good sense of well-being and their mental health is knowing that they are part of something big 
bigger, that their community loves them, they have a sense of belonging, they have a sense of affirmation that they're not in this alone. And that in itself goes a very, very long way. We get the smiles, we get the conversations, and we know that people really appreciate what we're doing. Thank you, thank you sure. very much. Want to buy some fresh fruits, vegetables, or ground provision, but don't have the time to go to the market or even to find parking? Look no further. Green, Green Market, market and, and Delivery, delivery is, is your, your solution. solution. Green Market and Delivery is an e-commerce store that sells and delivers local produce to customers in St. Kitsinevis. Anything you purchase, you can get fresh from the market and deliver directly to your door. Log on to www.greenmarketskn.com. Click on the e-store link, choose your items, and shop away. We have a wide array of products from fruits, vegetables, local products, spices and seasonings, and much more. Save time and energy shop on greenmarketskn.com your, your one-stop one -stop shop, shop for, for fresh, fresh local, local produce, produce. welcome back to the final segment of this episode of caring for you with me dr terence drew today we have been looking at the indirect repercussions of COVID-19, where we dealt fundamentally um, in the first two segments with mental health. And also we had here with us the president of the CARE Foundation, which is one of a number of organizations which have been reaching out to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. In the last segment, I want to deal with the chronic non-communicable diseases and how these would have been affected by COVID-19. Um, for persons who have high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, who had history of strokes, kidney disease, and so forth, we have been seeing a rise in these diseases, which means that there's an increase in the incidence. Incidence mean new cases. Why is this happening? Because during the last year and a half or so, people have been in their homes, locked down for varying periods. And this has resulted in less activity and overeating. And these two aspects are fundamental for increasing obesity rates, for increasing high blood pressure rates, diabetes, strokes, heart attacks, kidney disease, and the list goes on and on, but these are the most common. And so we want to say to you, I want to say to you, to be very mindful of these diseases, make sure that you get enough exercise. I can't stress that enough. Make sure you pay attention to what you eat and manage your mental health with the aspects that we looked at earlier and how we can deal with it and reach out for help if you so need because that can be a manifestation. Now, these non-communicable diseases can worsen or they can actually be a repercussion of um, mental health issues. Now, we also want to look at what happened with the uh, incidence increase and what happened with the prevalence there are much more persons with these diseases as a result for the same reasons and that is why we have to pay very very close attention now with these diseases it makes dealing with COVID-19 and the stresses from COVID-19 much more difficult it means there will be more doctor visits more medications and the worst of all when you would have a serious medical complication such as a stroke or heart attack and you have to go to the hospital your life is on the line and that is why i'm saying visit your health center reach out to your health care provider and make sure you pay special attention um, to these chronic non-communicable diseases because at the end of the day we want to make sure that people are healthy and remind you let me remind you that these are not direct repercussions of COVID-19. COVID-19 is a whole other topic in and of itself, but these are indirect repercussions. And so I have seen through my own medical practice that COVID-19 has tremendously negatively affected the scourge of these chronic non-communicable diseases. And with that, I want to thank you for joining me today on another episode of Caring for You with me, Dr. Terence Joe.